Thank you uh, to the organizers uh, for organizing this uh, meetup of ideas. Uh, so this is joint work with Thomas Schemmer and Alan Powell, and uh, I'd like to thank support from the Center for Emerging Markets. So this is kind of cross uh, cross field in the sense that uh, there's there's some uh, there's there's a lot of international here, and there's there's definitely uh, uh, entrepreneurship here, and uh, uh, so so that's kind of what we're focusing on. Particularly as the title suggests, do local and international venture capitalists play well together? Let me give you a quick brief introduction that I usually give to my you know, intro to a venture capital class, which is, you know, the, the, the venture capitalists are finances for early young firm, early stage or young firms, and in, in return they take stock or equity stake. And these are uh, uh, not your typical mutual fund type investments. It's not like a diversified portfolio. You have, for every two successes, you have eight failures. So those two successes have better be very, very good. So just to give you an example, um, the Sequoia, which is a, a big venture capital firm, invested $12.5 million in Google for 10% of its company. And after the IPO, Sequoia's holdings were worth, worth $2 billion, which is 162 times initial investment. So basically, if all their other investments had failed, Sequoia would still manage to give their own investors back 100%. So, so <coughs> Lauren, where, this, uh, where is the venture capital industry originated in the US? There's not been a, a lot of proliferation in cross-border venture capital investments, uh, going from 10% of all uh, VC investments uh, in 91 to about 23%. And this trend is much larger in emerging nations. So, so a, more, more of a, a trend in emerging nations as well. Um, and and, and as, at the same time, many non-US economies have developed their own VC markets. So, so we want to sort of think a little bit about you know, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of these investment opportunities in these emerging nations as well as other developed nations. Well, uh, these can actually come with substantial difficulties as any other investment, right? But uh, what are the nature of those difficulties? Well, this, the, the most straightforward answer is, well, international venture capitalists perhaps are not close enough to, to, to monitor their investments, which is typical of venture capital in which you sit down on the board and you may tell them what to do and you help advise these small companies. And local venture capitalists really don't know how venture capital works. So, so there these, there's this dichotomy of disadvantages for both the international and local VCs. And in general, we do care about entrepreneurship in emerging markets, particularly because we know entrepreneurship drives economic growth. So really, the basic trade-off is that local VCs, as I mentioned before, have local market expertise. They know the market area. They, and they're close to the investments. They can sit in their offices and tell these guys what to do. On the other hand, they just don't know how to do venture capital investing, which is kind of different uh, than your typical passive investing. International VCs, on the other hand, have the exact opposite problem. Yeah. They have the expertise. They, they know exactly what to do, but they're simply not there. So every time you have to go to China, you take a hop over, you know, now there are direct flights, but it's, it's a long flight. So <laughs> it, it's difficult to get there. Uh, and, 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 and this makes it harder for them to monitor the investments and tell, advise these funds. Also, they don't know the local markets very well. So really, the question is, which type of investor is more successful, right? And the answer is, well, it's the combination of the two. It kind of makes sense, right? Because you have on one side one disadvantage, on one side other. Let's just join force. Let's let's get together and you know get rid of all these disadvantages. And it <coughs> turns out all this effect is significant only in the emerging nations. And that this is an important important issue, particularly because we know in emerging nations infrastructure is bad, so getting there is harder. In emerging nations, VCs don't have as much expertise as perhaps European nations and, and, and Japan and other developed nations. So we, the other other result that we find is that VCs do have a proximity disadvantage. The farther the international venture capitalist is from the country that they invest in, they're more likely to partner with the local VC, and they're more likely to be successful if they partner with the local VC. And we know that local VCs have an expertise disadvantage because local VCs uh, who, have, who have done this enough, done this partnering business enough times with international VCs learn over time. So once they have done this partnering with international VCs enough times, they will like to go out alone, which kind of tells you that they learned a lot along the way. And uh, 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 they're less likely to syndicate again with international VCs, and they're more likely to be successful when they're on their own. So, so a, there is this expertise deficiency that was there, which was corrected once they, you know, sort of learned it from these international VCs. Um, one interesting uh, uh, result of the, in the study is compared to local VCs, international are less likely to invest in early stage firms, which again goes to this idea that if you're far away, you don't want to invest in these tiny 
guys with a computer and a dream, right? I mean, they don't have any revenues, they don't have any sales, they don't have customers. How do I monitor them? They're too far away. So, and, and I'll come to what this kind of means in terms of policy prescriptions. Uh, getting to the data, we actually use a, a, a combination of databases and our sample period is from 89 to 2008. Use a large sample of 30,000 uh, venture-backed firms from 45 countries. Uh, and we define success, in, in, as in the rest of the VC literature, in, uh, as whether or not the VCs have exited this firm. So in other words, whether they have sold their stake in the firm through either an IPO, selling to the public markets, or selling the portfolio company to another firm. And this is really because venture capitals are not in this business to be long-term investors. They have a 10-year ten, ten fund, which after which they have to dissolve the fund, pay off their investors. So VCs are in there to exit, and that's their sort of the final goal. In fact, you know, again, in my VC class, I just say, if you want to value these companies, start with the exit. You have to have an exit, exit strategy. So just to give you an idea, the, the emerging nations that are in the, in the sample, this looks kind of very uh, uh, typical of what you would see uh, uh, in the, the who's who of emerging nations, right? Mm -hmm. the, the BRICS and, and Poland, uh, Poland, South Africa, Thailand, Malaysia. And in the, U, in the developed nations, by the way, this, I'm just giving the most frequent ones. There are other, other nations of the samples, just I haven't showed them here. And the developed nation sample, the, the, the lion's share is with the US, which kind of makes sense. And then uh, um, the next biggest is the UK, followed by South Korea, France, Canada, Australia, and others. So, so, so there's, there's definitely substantial variation which you can exploit in the study. Um, this is uh, a regression of, the, uh, of whether or not the portfolio company is successful, that it exits, on whether or not you have either a local VC or a local international VC. And the base case is whether you have an international VC. So the idea here is that if you have a local and international VC, the, those stars mean that it's important. So if you have a local and international VC, you're 8.6 percentage points more likely to be successful than if either an international or a local VC. That's, that's kind of the takeaway from this. So the basic uh, result is that local and international VC combinations are, in fact, more successful than purely local or purely international VC syndicates, which is kind of the, the base, base, base result of the paper. And the idea is that, look, you, you combine these things, it mitigates the relative disadvantages of local and international venture capital. So that's kind of the big, big thing. Um, it, it, you know, a lot of the finance and economics journals are big on causality. They want to show that it's because this uh, combination, those get successful, not something else dr that's driving the relationship between the two, right? So we use a bunch of econometric techniques to show that, in fact, this is a causal relationship. In fact, it is the combination of local and international VCs that's causing success. And then you come to the idea that, look, if so, so if, if the international VCs are really facing a, a deficiency of proximity. So and is that really the case? We actually measure the distance between the countries of the international VC and uh, the, the country of the entrepreneurial firm and show that, you know, there is a positive relationship between a farther away VC and syndicating with a local local venture capitalist. So the result here is that farther away international VCs are more likely to partner with local VCs, consistent with the idea that if you're farther away, you're at a bigger disadvantage. And if you're farther away and you syndicate with a local guy, you're more likely to be successful. So farther away VCs are more likely to be successful if they syndicate with a local guy. So otherwise, you're not going to you're not going to do it. If you're going to do it, you might as well syndicate with a local guy, right? On the other side, what about local VCs? So the idea is that they have a deficiency of expertise. Is that really the case? So the way we shall show is a little bit the other way, showing that if you have interacted with international VCs enough times, then you've learned a lot. If that's the case, then you don't need them again. So what we show is local VCs who have interacted with international VCs multiple times in the past are less likely to partner again with them, which is kind of you know, uh, if you think if you're the international VC, it's like they don't have any choice, right? You got to go and learn. You got to go and invest with these guys, and then they learn and go do their own thing. And we also find that once these guys have enough prior syndication experience with the international venture capitalists, they are more likely to be successful if they invest on their own. So again, consistent with the idea, they have learned VC skills from these international VCs, and then they go on to do their own thing, and they're very successful at it. So it's kind of rational at the end of the day. All right, so broad conclusions is that, you know, uh, syndicates of local and international VCs are more successful than, than purely local or purely international. They, they have something to offer, both of them, and, and they, they get rid of their relative deficiencies. 
uh, in terms of uh, 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 you know expertise and uh, proximity and uh, local knowledge. So they bring it all together. You bring it all together. It's a good thing. And what about the policy sort of broad policy prescriptions, or at least you know what do we learn about this? Well, first thing is that governments may want to think about how they want to foster a, a, a venture capital investment. We hear a lot about people wanting to replicate Silicon Valley in their countries, or even in their states, right? I mean, if you can even think of uh, our states, other states that want to do this, how do we do this? Well, first of all, we know just by doing it yourself in your state, you're not going to get it. And we also can see by simply bringing in the international guys, you're not going to do it. Because the international guys are not really investing in the early stage guys. So if, if uh, Larry Page and Sergey Brin came with the server and said, invest here, you're not going to get it. Right? So Google's won't happen. So you need kind of both. Uh, and you have to, have to have a mixed strategy. You need to have both foster a local market and bring in the expertise from outside to sort of to, uh, improve things. And there's some uh, 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 analysis on infrastructure which sort of shows that uh, uh, once you have direct flights, well, once you have air service agreements, which increases connections, direct flights between the two countries, it actually increases the likelihood that international lease is coming. So it's kind of also related to this idea that you know, the farther away you are, it's worse for you, but if you can get a nice first class direct connection flight, you're more likely. <laughs> so, so that's pretty much it. Thank you. And,